Hello, my name is Arun Gupta and I work for Oracle. In this multi-part screencast series, I'm showing you how NetBeans 6.9 provides extensive and comprehensive tooling around Java EE 6 and Glassfish 3. So far, we have seen how to create a simple Java EE 6 application, added support for Java Persistence API 2 to retrieve database tables, then added support for Java Server Faces 2 and saw some faceless templating language magic, enhanced the application to add, it support, to add support for context and dependency injection and use that in conjunction with Java Server Faces 2. In this last part, I'm going to show how easy it is to publish a RESTful web service using JAXRS. Let's get started and switch to our IDE. This is the application that we have built so far, so I'm going to add support for JAXRS in this application, but you can do that with a new application as well. So right click here, say new, and we're going to go to other, web services and you can see there are a whole bunch of restful web services support for you over here either you can create a restful web services from database or from entity classes let me show you a simple one to begin with wherein we're going to build restful web services from well-defined patterns so click on next i want to build a simple restful web service with a single root resource so click on next over here the project is hello world in terms of package i'm going to make it as a resource package this resource is going to be accessible on simple. Oh, specify the package name first, simple resource, and then specify the path and click on finish. But one more thing here, um, it says the mime type is application slash XML. What that means is whenever this resource is accessed using HTTP get is going to return um, the data which is of the form application slash xml so let's click on finish now the restful resources are accessible at a url those that url can be registered either using a proprietary way using web.xml or a standard way which is what netbeans is doing by registering a java x ws rs core application and then the jax rs runtime understands and registers the implementation specific servlet in this case so your application continues to be portable, but your root resource uh, path is slash resources. So click on OK. And this is how my generated resource looks like. You know, this is a very simple Pojo class. It's got add path annotation that is coming from Java X RS AWS RS package. And here is my get XML method. And here you can see it says at get annotation. That means this is the method that gets invoked when this resource is accessed using HTTP get. Let's add some um, a method body here. And we're going to keep it very simple. Like this. And if I can also show you the generated code for us. So this is my application config. And as I was saying, it's a very simple class. It's an application config, just extends that class. And it says that my resources are accessible at this path. Now, since the project is automatically deployed for us, if we go to our browser, and this is the output from the previous screencast, and I can say resources, and I can say simple. The browser made a get request, and it showed us the right information correctly. So now if I go back to my IDE, let's show you some more advanced use cases over here. So right click this time and say new other web services. And let's say we generate restful web services from entity classes. So we click on next. It retrieved the entity classes that are already existing in our project. Now this entity class was generated in an earlier part of this uh, multicast uh, screencast series. So select the entity class, go add here, click on next. It's going to generate some code for us in our resource package, converter package. So take the defaults and click finish.
So all the packages or um, classes are generated for us. Now I can right click on the project and I can say test RESTful web services. So this is going to generate the template client code for us. As you can see the code is getting generated. And then a URL is shown to us. So since this is a local URL, so let's remember, remember this decision. And here you go. So you know, it shows us all the states. Now if we remember from our earlier screencast, states is nothing but a list of all the states in the United States. So um, I can click on states. And I can say, show me all the data starting with row 0, maximum 10. This is my query. And show me in a JSON format. So let's click on test and here you go. So it shows me all the results over here. So states slash one, as you can see that is the URLs are very restful as well. So if I click on this URL, it shows me exactly the information that is being fetched from the database. I can go back to my uh, browser and I can say, show me the raw view. So it shows me the raw JSON data that comes over here. I can go up here and say, um, get me the XML data and instead first 10 I can say show me first 24 so you click on test again and this time of course it shows you the first 24 rows and same thing you can see the raw view you can see the sub resources that are um, getting access the headers and even the HTTP monitor the HTTP headers that are getting transferred as well so it's pretty cool now if we go back to IDE, then I can show you other patterns with which RESTful Web Services can be generated. In the IDE, right click, New, Other, Web Services, and you can see RESTful Web Services can be generated directly from a database table. Even the RESTful Java or JavaScript client can be generated. So NetBeans IDE overall provides a very comprehensive support for generating RESTful web services using JAXRS. Lastly, let me leave you with some references. You can download Glassfish from glassfish.org. You can download NetBeans from netbeans.org. Any questions around Glassfish, post a new thread on Glassfish forum and follow us on Twitter at the handle Glassfish. Thank you.